What's up, loves? It's your girl, Data Lisa, with another Nick vlog. And today, I thought it would be dope to go on live just to kind of see what's out there, see what Nick fans I have. Um, we've had a couple of rough games. The last six games have been pretty rough. I will tell you today that we finally got our win. Um, I know it's been a couple of rough days, but let's just, let's just keep with the momentum. And I'm not going to go through every game because I'm depressed about it. I was literally depressed. Like, what is it? Why is it that when we start to get excited, that, as a Nick fan, you know this. If you start to get excited about something Knicks, they're going to crush your heart. That's just a fact. If you're a Nick fan and you've been a consistent Nick fan, you know that when things start to get hot and heavy is when absolutely shit starts to get bad. And that's what happened as a Nick fan. Shout out to Shit Too Funny and coming on. Um, <laughs> it's my first live regarding the Knicks. And um, as you know, if you're a Nick fan, you know it could be it could be a rough road. So I'm gonna quickly touch on the um, I'm gonna quickly touch on the Boston game that happened today. We actually won by 30 points. All right, let's go into the game. Let's talk about some of the things that I feel like we've been lacking these couple of games and see how we can possibly get on the right road. Um, so Knicks have won the last five games. I already stated that final score today in Boston was 105 to 75. Ju um, our man Julius Randle had 20 points, 12 rebounds. RJ Barrett had 19 points, 11 rebounds. And our man IQ, we know him as Emmanuel Quickly. -A. He's instantly getting some love on the Knicks front and they're calling him IQ. Everybody is loving how dope he is, how smart he is on, our, on the court. Remember, he's a rookie. Um, <laughs> and I have to quickly say this about my man IQ. I think he's dope. Hey Prince, how you doing? Um, I think he's dope, but what is wrong with the brother's shorts? I mean, as girls, we would lo we love to see some legs, but damn, his shorts are tight and short. Like, quickly, please get some, please get some, New York knows how basketball shorts need to be. If they're above the thigh, you don't need to have them on, brother. And if you're playing for New York, you better get it together. Because people giving you the side eye. Like, what's going on, brother? Your shorts is real short. Anyways, let me not... <laughs> Those is definitely 70 shorts. Oh, my God. If you check him out, Emmanuel, quickly, his shorts is short. But let's not... Let's, let's set that aside. <laughs> let's talk about how dope he's been. The last couple of days, he's been our go-to person. Like I said, in this game, he had 19 points... Oh, I'm sorry. He had 17 points, 8 assists. And no rebounds. Um, so he needs to kind of, I think on the defensive end, he's kind of lazy. Um, um, but on the offensive, uh, he has his moments. He has his moments. Because I remember in a couple of games, he was, you know, hustling for the ball. You can tell that he's still trying to get his minutes up and so on and still trying to learn the game. But what I love about him is that he's not afraid to push the ball. And if you know old New York basketball players, it's all about driving. My husband and I was just talking about that. Like, what happened to the age of driving? Everybody wants to shoot threes now. But the crazy thing is people who should not be shooting threes are shooting threes all damn day. Like Julius Randle, what are you doing lodging it from three-point? You a power forward. Play your part and play it because you can't even dribble. I don't know why they got that man on the three-point line if he cannot dribble. Seriously, his turnovers are ridiculous. I have a love-hate relationship with um, Julius Randle. I definitely do because I think he, because of his size, I think people don't understand. Like, I like to compare him to, to Anthony Mason because he, he definitely has like that, that broad, like he can really be a good player, but I think he has a lot of growing up to do. That's my opinion. I really do. I think that, you know, now that there was some um, some people kind of transferred out to other teams, he has been the go-to person that we're looking to. He's our leading scorer. Um, you know, R.J. Barrett is up there, too. Um, <laughs> uh, so, shout out to Sean De Niro, my husband. He, he basically said he needs to go. No, I, I, you know, I struggle with that, right? Because I feel like when we finally get somebody that we put so much time and effort to and then we trade him, it's almost like, Yo, with KP, when they traded Qu KP, I was literally, like, about to be in tears. And that's a fact. Yo, my husband sent me a text, like, yo, this going down. I was like, what? That was, like, the unicorn. That was the only, that's the only person we had on the field. Like, I, 
I'm telling you, I was stressed out. Stressed out. I was so I was so happy to get Hardaway away. I couldn't stand Tim Hardaway Jr. He played nothing like his father. He is the total opposite. He's a bull hog. He does, I, I'm telling you, he was the worst. And you know, everyone will take his 30 point games and think that that's it. Like, oh yeah, he had a couple of 30 point games. He is trash. Tim Hardaway Jr. is trash. He was the best thing that happened in the KP and him trade when they went to Dallas. That was the best thing. Like Tim Hardaway, the fuck out of here. But KP, listen, he really grew on me. Seriously. So I really took that hard. I don't, I don't know if I could say, we were talking about Austin Rivers the last time and, you know, Doc Rivers' son. And although I think he has dribble, I think he struggles a lot with going to the hole because he's small. And there's not a lot of small dudes out there that could really take it to the hole without being scared. Except for one dude, and we know him as Kembe Walker, the New York native from the Bronx. The boogie down, went to Rice High School. Shout out to Kembe Walker. He should have been on the Knicks. I know he probably doesn't have any control over that. But he's the type of player that could drive. That's the type of guard the Knicks need. The Knicks need a guard that could drive and is not afraid to take it to the damn hole. What happened to the 90s basketball? What happened to the days when Anthony Mason and Chris Childs was two-piece and Kobe? What happened to them days? Now... It, and I, I just feel like people don't have that same energy. We need that New York attitude. Actually, we were just talking about New York and New York stuff on my podcast. So if you haven't checked out my live, go over to Mama's Cocktail Hour, um, where we talked all things la uh, New York last night in the live. And of course, you know, I had to shout out my Knicks because we're so New York. We're part of the culture. Um, so I miss that dynamic. Who am I excited about now? I'm trying to think. I like Quickly. And I love me some R.J. Barrett. But I think the problem that we're having with R.J. Barrett is he's a lefty and he can't make right-hand layups. And that is a problem. You need to be able to make a layup, my brother. I know you a sophomore now, but come on, get it together. Let's talk about, real quickly, on the Boston end today, who actually had some points. Um, Jalen Brown had 25.6 rebounds and 3 assists. My man Marcus Smart. I love me some Marcus Smart. He had 10 points. And then the New York native, Ken Bay Walker, he didn't really kill it against the Knicks. I guess we should be happy for that today. <laughs> he had 9 points and 3 rebounds. So we really, um, we were playing a zone tonight in um, Boston. So I think that's what really helped us. We were playing a 2-3 zone. Um, we were really uh, guarding the front so Ken Bay couldn't um, go down the middle. So I thought that that was dope. Um, let's talk about Tristan Thompson. Why is he on the Boston Celtics because he is trash. He is. I don't know why Khloe Kardashian picked one of the trashest basketball players there ever was. Like, the brother had three points. And you've been in the NBA how long? Like, he has no defensive skill. He was not hustling up and down the court. He missed a straight-up alley-oop. He missed a dunk right underneath the basket. Like, Yo, like you could tell a lot of these players are really, I don't know if they're serious. Like you can see some basketball players who are serious about their craft, such as, um, I'm, I'm not going to throw James Harden. You know, James Harden is in Brooklyn now and everyone's joking on him because they're saying he got a beer belly, but that's neither here nor there. I'm not fat shaming him people. I'm just saying what they're saying. So get it. So get it right. But no, let's talk about players who are real players on and off the court. Steph Curry, of course. He's a real player on and off the court. That guy is practicing his, practicing his shot every day. He's shooting from freaking, I don't know, from the fucking bleachers and making threes. I think that he's someone that takes his craft seriously. Um, I, 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 there's Kyrie Irving, but I don't know what's going on with that brother. He got a lot of issues. I don't know. I can't tell you guys. I don't know. He has family stuff or maybe he just doesn't want to mess with the Nets. I don't know what's going on with him. But um, Kevin Durant. You know, he actually just made his first debut against the Knicks when they killed the Knicks when they just played the next um the Nets earlier this week. But I don't know. I I I like rookies, right? I don't really pay attention to the older players. People like to ride LeBron James wave and all of that. Like, yes, he's a great player. He's a tenured player, but 
you know, he's at a point now that I don't think he has or he thinks he has anything to learn. I'm more excited about the players who I can see grow, right? Um, so for me, like when I see rookies coming into the league, like that's what really, that's what really makes me happy to see them learn because they're eager to learn and you see them develop as a player. Whereas, you know, the more tenured players, they feel like, listen, I've been doing this for a long time. There's no room for growth. So I'm kind of happy that the Knicks are rebuilding right now. We're number nine in the Eastern conference. Um, we are, let's see how many wins we are guys. We got six wins, eight losses. So, I mean, I think we're doing our thing. It's the Knicks. So, I expect there to be some drama along the way. But what I hope we de de develop is we need to develop our players that we have now. For instance, like Austin Rivers, I don't really know if he has a, a, um, a role yet. Like, he's playing the point. They have him as shooting guard. They're moving him around. So I, I think that they're just trying to really find out how guys mesh together. I mean, I really love my man, R.J. Barrett, um, I, you know, the Canadian who as a kid was a Knicks fan because his father was a Knicks fan. I think that story is so dope. And I could just be saying that because I'm a Knicks fan. <laughs> but any which way, um, I have some, I, I, I mean, I want to go through this journey with you guys. If you guys like these lives, let me know. Um, I was just going to pre-record this stuff, but I like to know who's a Knicks fan or who's interested in basketball. Or even if you're a female who doesn't quite know, maybe this can just give you some brownie tips for your boo. So you can have some boo time and if, you, if, you, if your hubby or your boyfriend likes basketball, you can just get one of your quick mama moments or your little Zeta Nick vlogs from me and then you can go and have something to talk about. Um... You know, I love talking all things Knicks. I love talking all things basketball. So definitely check me out. Um, I'm going to be every Sunday here with you guys. I will be going live because I, I kind of like the feedback that I got on live today. It was dope. It was good to talk to you guys. So we're going to do this every Sunday, a live, to talk to talk Nick talk or whatever you guys, um, basketball talk. Because um, I, like I said, I love talking all aspects about basketball. I'm a coach. Um, my husband and I coached a... 12 13 year old team i coach my daughter's team so i coach girls so i love basketball it's my it's one of my passions so it's, it's something that i never wanted to let go and if you guys understand that if you guys played sports younger and you still watch the game because it's something that you love it's something that you 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 can't like you feel like it's missing in your life for so many years like i played high school ball i played college ball my kids played ball it's such a big part of my life basketball so for me to kind of just forget it um and not do anything basketball like I, I was in a slump for a long time until i found my podcast which is mama's cocktail hour if you haven't checked it out check it out now we on instagram we on youtube um but yo basketball is life like when they say basketball is life like let me let me show you guys how basketball is life Check out my purse. I know the guys don't give a fuck about this, but me, check this out, ladies. It's a purse. It got a zipper here, and it's a basketball. Ah, you can put stuff in there. My husband would be like, you're just going to throw shit in there. Facts. I'm going to throw lots of shit in here. But it's cute because it's a basketball. So thank you guys for... Coming to Mama's Cocktail Hour Live to check out the New York Knicks. I'm a Knicks fan. And tune in every Sunday to see me talk shit, all things Knicks, because I be stressed out with you guys. It's a fact. I can't, I have my love-hate relationship with the Knicks. Most of the time, it's hate. But most of the time, it's love. Because at the end of the day, if you know you're a true New Yorker, you know you're a Knicks fan, you know you're going to be loyal. Because that's what New Yorkers are. We're loyal. We love our team. And our team is a big part of our culture. So check me out every Sunday for your Knicks scoop or basketball scoop, uh, basketball scoop, anything basketball. All right, guys? Love you much. Talk to you guys later. Oh, enjoy your MLK Day tomorrow. So uh, you guys don't got to go to work, hopefully. I hope you enjoy that. And I will be here back with you guys next what Sunday for another Knicks vlog. Check you guys out. Bye.